Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we got a couple of very interesting topics. First, I wanted to talk about Horse MD or Marcelo Di Angelis. So you guys know what happened at Romania Pro. Samson Dauda won this show rather easily. It wasn't really close, if you ask me, between him and Behrus Dabani. If Behrus Dabani had better legs, though better quads in particular, maybe it would be a different story, maybe it would be an actual battle, because he was freaking shredded, he was peeled, he was hard as nails. But, you know, Samson is still a lot bigger and he has, like, much, much better legs, so... Behrus is still not really a top 3 Mr. Olympia material, but I think I can see him in 8th, beating Tony O'Burton and Regan Grimes and Charles Griffin. 8th, 9th, top 10, for sure if you ask me. And I think this was expected, but what happened at the 3rd spot at this show is what is very very interesting. Horse MD taking the 3rd spot and beating freaking Nathan Diasha. And this was Nathan Diasha, I believe, at his 100%. I don't think he was any worse at Italy or, or Spain or France. I think this was a very good Nathan and Horse MD actually beat him. So this was, I would say, a surprise for me. When I was watching the show, I said it might happen, but I was more inclined to say that Nathan is gonna be third and Horse MD fourth, or maybe even fifth, but no, no, he ended up in third. His strongest attribute by far, for sure, are his quads. His legs are freaking insane. He has legs like a freaking horse. And he also has crazy separation, crazy quality right you can see like even from the side it's not just that his quads are massive but also his hamstrings are really good and i mean the way his physique flows his waistline his triceps are also very good he has a very good horseshoe right his back was amazing in the back lat spread look at this like very thick very wide and his conditioning in the glutes and hamstrings was pretty good uh, what he needs to look at look at the structure here and like just the classic lines like, he has it, he has it all, I mean, for today's bodybuilding, what it is, he has all the tools to get to the very top. But he needs to fix this, somehow, his back double bicep is just horrible. Like, there is no flare to the lats, there is no wee taper, it just looks really flat. I mean, the conditioning in the back was fine, and like, the upper back, you know, trap, uh, rhomboid area thickness is there, but lats and terrace muscles are nowhere to be found, like, there was no pop, there was no wee taper, this was just really, really bad, I hope it's just a wrong way of doing the pose, maybe he was cramping up and he couldn't open up, I don't know, I hope it's that, hopefully this can be fixed with posing, because if it's only development... I don't know, I don't think I can see him ever having great back double bicep. If he had a back double bicep as good as his back lat spread, maybe he would have challenged back Rustabani and placed second here. That didn't happen. He placed third, which was extremely, it was amazing for his pro debut. Uh, this guy was known as an Instagram bodybuilder. A lot of people in my comment section were saying, this guy should not even be mentioned, he's just an Instagram bodybuilder, he's not that good on stage. I guess he proved everybody wrong, he is that good on stage. He proved himself at this very, very high quality show. I mean, we had Samson Dauda, third in the world right now, potentially future Mr. Olympia. You had Nathan Diasha, 11 time Mr. Olympia winner, Marcelo beat him. Then you also have Behrus Tabani, who is realistically top 8, top 10 in the world. Where does this put Marcelo Di Angelis in the world? I would say this makes him a top 10 bodybuilder. I mean, I remember following this guy a long, long time ago when he was an amateur. He really did have a lot of potential. But did I expect this much of a gain, this crazy progress? And him placing third at this show and basically proving himself to be a top 10 Olympian. Not literally, but he would be up there if he competed looking like this. I honestly didn't expect this and I think this is a great story. And the progress he made in the last uh, two years is extraordinary, it's amazing. And by the way, he was coached by Milos Sarcev. Actually, all top three guys at this show are Milos Sarcev's clients. So yeah, Milos Sarcev is definitely one of the best coaches in the world right now, arguably second best. 
next to Honey Rambud, but that's only based on the results and the titles. I mean, Honey Rambud is working only with the genetic freaks. He doesn't want to work with anybody. He only works with the guys who are already at the top. He didn't create Chris Bumstead. He didn't create uh, Harry Japan and Derek Lunsford. He helped them, and he did a great job for sure. But Milos basically built Samson up from zero. And look at this. I mean, look at Marcelo D'Angelis. Look at the crazy progress that he made working with Milos. I mean, I don't want to make this video about Milos Sarchev, but he is arguably the best coach in the world right now. And this crazy progress here, I mean, it's not all Milos, I'm sure Marcelo actually trained like a maniac, but look at this freaking gain. This is insane, look at the freaking legs, how much bigger his legs are looking now. Uh, yeah, he did maybe gain a little bit um, size in the waist, of course, I mean, his waist won't stay the same if he gains, I don't know, he looks like he gained 50 pounds of muscle. So, uh, overall, an amazing progress, an amazing achievement, and I'm looking forward to seeing this guy at the Mr. Olympia, hopefully next year, hopefully he will qualify, and uh, he's gonna do some serious damage, I can definitely see him in the top 10, the way he is right now, but at this rate of progress, potentially even higher, we'll see. Alright, the next thing I wanted to talk about is whether this is the end of Chris Bumstead era, dominating the Classic Physique division. So, as you guys probably know at this point, Chris Bumstead is going to become a father. His fiance, I believe, is pregnant, and as you can see, she has been pregnant for some time. So, in, uh, I don't know, I'm guessing five, six months, maybe, he's gonna be a dad. So, is he gonna be prepping for the Mr. Olympia while taking care of a newborn baby? I don't think he knows at this point, maybe he already decided, but maybe he's waiting to see what it's gonna be like and he's gonna decide, like he usually starts his prep at 4 months before the Mr. Olympia, somewhere around there, and if he feels like he can prep, he might start, but I don't think we're gonna know if we're gonna see him on Mr. Olympia stage until maybe a few months before the Mr. Olympia, but personally, I wouldn't bet on it, I think Chris Bumstead is pretty much done. It's not only that, it's also the fact that he had so many injuries at this point. Even this prep, he had a lat tear. And the year before, he had a bicep tear. I think also he hurt his quad at some point. And this year, he looked, he looked crazy, he looked amazing once again. I think his conditioning was a little bit worse than the previous year, but still, he was really good. And I don't know if he can replicate this, especially with the newborn around the house, uh, with all the injuries and potential new injuries. You can see his body is kind of fighting to, to stay whole at this point. So maybe now would be a good time. I mean, he has a really nice round number, five Olympia titles. And also, like, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm listening to him talking about bodybuilding and stuff like that, I don't know, to me it feels like he kind of he had enough. I, I, don't th I don't think he's there mentally. And uh, this year he talked a lot about trying to enjoy the prep, trying to stay present and stuff like that. And if he tries to do it the same way this year, by the way, look at this, most muscular, this is insane, this is crazy. This is insane, it would be such a shame not to see this guy on the Mr. Olympia stage anymore. I mean, the competition itself would be more fun, maybe we would have a couple of new uh, classic champions, but nobody really comes close to the quality that Chris Bumstead brings to the stage. But is he gonna quit or is he not? I have no idea. But, you know, once again, as I said, if he tries to fail everything through the prep and be present fully and be there for his child at the same time, I don't know, I don't know if he would pull it off. Maybe he would, maybe he would still be able to come at like 80-90% and it would probably be enough, but who knows, maybe he would lose. Maybe Ramon makes a ton of progress and he perfects his posing and he beats him. It wouldn't be the best way for Chris Bumstead to finish his career by placing second or whichever place instead of first. So maybe this would be a good time for him to, you know, hang those trunks and uh, say goodbye to the bodybuilding stage. As you can see in the caption of this most recent post that he made, it was a, a video from his prep where he's hitting the front lat spread and he talks about how he was actually present for the first time in his life. He was proud of what he was looking at and stuff like that. And I think the reason why he did that, he did it that way, is because he really wanted to feel the prep for the last time. 
You know, that could be the reason. Now, I'm just speculating here. I have no inside info. I don't know if he's really retiring, but it smells like that. It seems like that. Whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section down below. All right, and finally, I wanted to talk about Nick Walker. So, he just posted this physique update in which he looks really good. Like, the waist looks really good and he seems a little bit, you know, fuller. Yeah, he was injured, but it seems like it's not preventing him from training and uh, utilizing this uh, rebound, push or rebound. So, as you can see, he's in the gym, he's training. I'm guessing he's only training his upper body. I don't think he's training his legs. And overall, he looks very good. Now, the question is whether he's gonna do the Arnold Classic or not. I mean, I don't know if he can recover fast enough to really prep for Arnold Classic and look his very best at that show. And would it make sense for him to do any other show than Arnold Classic? Maybe he actually deserves to get that special invite from Mr. Olympia, but we'll see. Maybe he's gonna recover fast enough and do the Arnold Classic he actually did say that the injury isn't that bad. It was bad enough uh, for it to look horrible, for him not to be able to be, you know, top three again in the world. But I think he's going to recover fast enough and we'll probably watch this guy at the Arnold Classic and uh, he might win. But I don't know, Samson is doing it as well, so it's going to be interesting. Anyways, I found something interesting here in the comments. Now, this is not the type of stuff that I make videos about, but I don't know, maybe it's going to be interesting to mention it. Uh, as you can see right here, somebody asked Nick, uh, why did he break up with uh, Maria, with his girlfriend? And I'm sure all of you guys know who she is because he posted like a million photos with her and she's literally in every video of his and uh, every time he's on a podcast, he mentions her name. So I'm sure we all know who is Maria, his girlfriend, but it seems like it is his ex-girlfriend. So this person here in the comments says, Bro, why did you break up with Maria? It's so heartbreaking. Give us a brief explanation at least. And the answer here by somebody random is uh, that they heard that she cheated on him. I don't know where did this person hear this. Is there a YouTube channel about this? I would be interested. <laughs> I know it's horrible, but I would be interested to hear about this. It's, it's drama. I mean, I like me some drama, I, I have to admit. So I would like to hear about this. If you guys have any info, tell me in the comment section down below. But yeah, it seems like they actually broke up. I also went to her page and uh, you can see the comments here. Everybody is commenting about their breakup. Where was this announced? What the hell happened? Honestly, I have no clue. I don't have any information for you guys, but this is what I got right here. If you guys know anything more, you can tell us down below. It is a shame that these guys broke up. They were a very interesting uh, fit couple. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up for more bodybuilding videos like this. Subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.